Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV again for a match preview, guys. And we are going to be bringing you more consistent videos um, moving forward with match previews, match reactions, everything that you want. And they're all going to be live shows for you guys as well. We have got the panel again as well. If you know me before, you know that I've been on, on but well, I've got my own channel called GNA TV, but I also have. Uh, I also tune in and, you know, work with Chelsea Fan TV as well. Guys, it's good to see all of you again, man. I hope you guys are all well, man. We are back. We are ready. We're loaded. You're going to get, you know, you're gonna. it's, it's going to be good. And it's going to be an interesting last part of the season, right? Because we've got so much coming up. We've still got FA Cup, which we're going to be talking about today. We've also got the games left to see if Chelsea can make it into Europe. We've got a lot to speak on today as well. We're not only doing the match preview we're going to start with a little bit of transfer news and a little bit of transfer gossip in and around this football club, guys. But do me a favour. Make sure you guys are smashing the likes. We've got the panel to join us later as well, guys. And let's cue that intro. Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV for this match preview of the semi-final between Chelsea and Man City, guys. And boy, it's good to see a lot of you faces, nearly 100 people in the building already. Big love to every single one of you that are in here. Guys, like I said to you just now, we will be bringing consistent match previews and match reactions for you. We're also going to be getting into transfers. So all of these are going to be live shows for you guys as well. Live shows, live requests. We're going to be getting into so much in the round Chelsea Football Club. Lots to speak on as well. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. How are you all, How are you all doing, guys? It feels like it's been a minute, right? It feels like it's been a minute. I'm going to say hello, guys. Do us a favour also. Keep hitting the likes, guys. You need to get the likes up. That will help it flow through the algorithm and then allow us to attract more people in here as well and help the channels grow. Both channels grow. It's very important. Jack's big up, bro. Like you said there, smash the likes. Guys, make sure that you download the Match Bingo app as well, using the link right here as well. If you haven't done already, please do that. Uh, they are a, a partner of Chelsea Fan TV as well, so make sure that you guys get that done, guys, um, and check it out as well. Um, gaming, in, uh, gaming for Life, how are you doing? Good to see you. Dexter, how are you, man? Good to see you as well. Abdul, big up, brother. Nice to see you as well. Tamam, how are we, guys? How are we? How are we? Yes, guys. JT, what are we saying? What's been going on, bro? Hope to hope you're well. Skills in the building. Chelsea will get battered. Well, people like to say that Chelsea are going to get battered against the bigger clubs. But what's happened this season is a different story. Yeah, we lose to the smaller clubs, the relegation teams, this, that and the other. But when it comes to the bigger player, uh, the bigger clubs at the moment and Chelsea's record or Potch's record against the bigger teams, we haven't done too bad. But the next two big games are very big. Man City in the FA Cup. And then on the back of that, Arsenal, who will get, which again, we'll get into a match preview as well. Arsenal um, away in the Premier League, which in all theory, skills, we could, could we could completely end your title challenge. And I got to hope, pray that we do. I got to hope, pray that we do, because we've done it against Tottenham in that time. Wouldn't it be lovely for us to get a draw or even beat them at their own ground and just finish off their title chances? That would be... Mwah! Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. <laughs> um, damn, my G. Big up for real, my man. Uh, downsize up on us. Like, I've, I haven't seen you in a while, bro. Yeah, no, downsize. Like, yeah, honestly, bro, listen, I've just been very busy, mate. Very, very busy. Um, things have uh, obviously been in the way. But now um, we're looking to, to pump out new shows again and be more consistent and build these views up and get ourselves back up to where we were before, guys. We've got transfer, like, we're going to have transfer talks. We're going to have Ben Jacobs. We've got all of these things all happening again, very in the near, in the near future. So you're going to get a lot of consistent shows, live shows now, guys. We just need you guys to keep smashing the likes here, sharing it out as well. Let people know that we're live so that we can work on it. See our Chelsea back after a six, that 6-0 six win. Um, I'm going to say we're back. I think we deserve to actually have a good, at least have a good win. <clears throat> I mean, you lot have been poor the last three games. You've been shocking. In fact, in many ways, you bottled it. Where are you in the table? Have some shame. Why should I have some shame? We've got a chance to be in Europe, in Europe potentially. <clears throat> We've got a chance to be in Europe, potentially. Why are you getting so triggered, bro? Because your team's bottling it again. 
Would you take Kepa back next season? Good question. And it's one that we should obviously talk about because we are going to do a little bit of transfer talk in a minute. We've got Matson to talk about in a second. But, you know, there's lots to talk around what the Chelsea need in the summer. Summer's going to be a very big period for Chelsea still. People don't think we're going to do as much work. What I think will happen in the summer is I can see a lot of players being sold, even maybe some starters, which might shock a, f a certain few people. But then on top of that, then once we've done that and we've released the wages the wage structure and the wage bill, and we've managed to maybe make some sales upon that. I could see us signing a couple of good players. Do I think we'll go and spend 150 million on one player, 110 million on another player? No, but what I do think is that we'll probably will spend, but it will be trying to spend smartly. It just depends if we can get specific individuals that fit the profile of what we're trying to do for the prices we need. And it's going to be a very interesting uh, summer window for Chelsea uh, because I see a lot of people being sold. Can't even beat 10 men Burnley at home. Your point? You got battered by Aston Villa and we beat them. You got battered by Aston Villa and we beat them. We haven't been better though. You're right. Big up, buddy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's benched he, he he's benched for Madrid at the moment, is what Jack says. Chelsea will lose to City and Arsenal. Okay. Okay, bro. OK, we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's a good chance we might do. In the summer, we need a miracle. Why do we need a miracle, Dizzle? You need to let us know in the chat. Well, how are you feeling about the summer window coming up, guys? Matson is probably not a Chelsea player anymore. He's doing amazing for Dorman. And Abdul, this is where we're going to go to in a second. We've got a couple of feeds to share. Let's start going through some of the bits that I've got, actually. Um, starting with the... What's this one? This one. But where is this one? Where is this one? Let's come back out of it. Sometimes it takes me like two times to like get it in order. There we go. All right. This is where we start. I want to start with the owners and I want to start with this competition quickly because we haven't really spoke in a, in a while as well. Um, there's an opportunity for Chelsea um, Football Club to be entered into the FIFA Club World Cup, which could be a new mini tournament. But every person that participates gets a £50 million participation fee which is huge. Financially, it's huge. And these are the type of revenue streams that I can see the likes of Todd Bowie and Nick Bally looking to go down the route of to bring in money. Because let's be serious, we've spent a lot of money. The digits on the accounts will show that we've spent a lot. That's true. We can't ignore that. The, the, dish, the difference here right now is how can they recoup and how can they bring different types of revenue through the door? We know Chelsea have already sold two hotels to clear the, to, to, to basically abide by the PSR rules, which is what they've done. Yeah, they've brought the, the, the debt down from doing that as well by using one of their subsidiary companies to buy the two hotels as well, which is, is allowed. And trust me, Chelsea probably own a lot more properties. This is not just one or two. Um, But it, we need to receive money from on the pitch, you know, and that's the important thing. You know, this is why entering into like a mini tournament, like a new club FIFA World Cup tournament would make a lot of sense. And don't be shocked if we did enter into it because I can see it happening. I can see it happening. JT, big up Don. What we saying? Smash the likes, people. Big up Don in the building. Come on, guys. Nearly 100 people in here at the moment. Nearly 100 people. Let's keep tapping the screen. Share it out. Cole Palmer hat trick is what we've got here as well. So <clears throat> are you back in Clear Lake again? Bowley uh, in... After that 6-0 win. Uh, skills, you're very narrow-minded, aren't you? You're quite narrow-minded and bitter, aren't you? Like, I, I get it. A little bit, like, I get it, bro. Like, you've you've had to watch your team suffer for 20 years while we've won everything, you know? And I've watched my team win everything. It's not one trophy we haven't won. You can't even win a major trophy in 20, mate. You just stick to your FA Cups, you know? Palmer is a disgrace. He's already got a hat-trick and he tries to fit fight with Jackson. Jacksonville. Yeah, okay. Now you're talking more for I'm just gonna ignore you. Um <laughs> it feels like we have a better balance of our ends, to be honest. That's not true as well. I disagree with that as well, JT. Um and it's not we have a better balance with Enzo. I actually think if Enzo was in that Everton game uh that we won six nil, that he would have just flourished and actually would have probably seen got a lot from him more in that game. That's the type of game that he would have loved and eaten up, in my opinion. Um but we move. So, yeah, this is one one big opportunity that could be falling into the hands of the, the owners as well. There's also a bit of transfer talk, guys, um, and it's just little bits and bobs. Obviously, we're not nowhere near the window yet, but there was talks about Thiago Silva leaving the football club and actually going probably higher, like back to Brazil or whatever, wherever he wants to go to finish off or retire or whatever he's going to do. But there's slight hints at the moment 
Um, Pochettino would like to obviously would stay for one more season. Uh, in the case of departure, uh, in the case of a departure, Pochettino would like an older and more experienced leader, not someone who is really young. That makes sense to me. That does make sense to me. Listen, there's a lot of talks around Thiago Silva not being able to, you know, to be that guy, be the man. You know, he can't, you know, he can't keep playing at the level that we've used him. And to be quite honest with you, we've abused him. We've abused him when it comes to how much we've relied on him at the football club as well. And to be honest, he still is. And I think like, you know, we'll go to ads in a second. I think ads will agree with me. I, still, I think he still is probably our best defender. When you look at it on paper, the Sassy Badishu, we've not seen enough of Fafana. colwell has been in and out injured as well. Like, you know, Chalabas in and out as well. Looks like he's going to be sold. And it makes sense because we don't have that experience. And even if we keep him next season, I don't think we should be playing him every game. It just can't happen. But having him there, yeah, for experience and leadership and playing games, because he will still play in games where we need, I think he should play. I think he should be utilised in the right manner. Um, and it wouldn't shock me why Pochettino would still want him here because we do lack a lot of experience. We do lack leadership. We do lack people that can lead. And he was in the Everton game, 6-0. And we looked calm with him at the back. Him and Chalabar actually had quite a good game. And, you know, he brings that calmness. And I know a lot of people are like, he holds the ball up too long. He doesn't play it quick enough. It's true in specific games. But when you're winning games, like we we, like we was then, you want someone calm at the back that can calm, take control, not rush, not play balls in quick, you know, just maintain the game well and understand the game well. And he's, get, he's reading of the game is in defence is the best in our team, defensively. He reads the game immense. Immense, absolutely immense, and he's a top player for us. Ads, how you doing, bro? Good to see you. Hey, couch, big up to you as well. Nice to see you in the chat. What yeah, I'm say? well, brother. I'm well, brother. How you doing? Yeah, we're not bad. We're not bad. We're back on Chelsea Fan TV now as well, along with our own channel as well. So lots of consistent pushes. I've been having chats with him. So lots of consistent shows and streams are going to be going on from now on. So back to the back to the usual push all the way near the mm. end of the season. But um, sounds good. Yeah, all good. Just talking about um, a little bit of transfer and obviously Thiago Silva, there's been talks about him leaving the club. He's leaving, he's leaving, he's leaving. But there's hints that Maurizio Pochettino would like to maybe keep him another season. What's your thoughts on that? Um, listen, Thiago Silva's had a great um, time at Chelsea, all things considered. Obviously, legend of the game, had a great career with the likes of AC Milan, PSG. Um, but never won a Champions League until we came here. And obviously he came here, was incredible in that season with Tuchel and everything. So, listen, he's done great things here. Um, I felt like this season should have been that season we transitioned from Thiago Silva, but we pretty much until about February, March, we were playing him pretty much every single game, which at the age of 38 in the Premier League is, is crazy. Um, so, yeah, while he's, again, like he was saying, like he, for me, he is still our best centre-back, um, which, again, is, is a more of an indictment on the rest of the guys. But... Um, yeah, he's 39 years of age, 38 or 39 years of age. He's putting a lot of um, time in the game, but I feel like at this point now, we should be moving on from him. We should be in a position yeah. where we can't move on from him. And I'm happy to move on from him because um, he's given enough, enough to us. He's given enough to the to the game in European football. And if he wants to go back to Brazil and chill, um, then yeah. absolutely he should. So that's what I want. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to see him go. It's just, of course, we need to we need to um, reinvest properly in that centre-back area because right now we're we're not looking good there. But also the guys that we have right now, one of them, if not two of them, needs to step up. They need to step up next season. 100%. 100%. And that's the real big thing. And like when you look at someone like Wesley Fofana that's been out for so long, you know, where, how does he come back? How will he look? You know, the Sassy, maybe with another season under his belt, could improve potentially. Badia Shield needs to find some sort of form because at the moment he's just rocky. Uh, Colwell? I mean, is Colwell the guy for you? You look at Colwell. Do you think he's someone that could maybe maybe step up if he's played in his correct position? I think he could be. Um, from what I've seen this season, like it's, it's a, like I was confident before the season that he could he was going to be the guy. This season, I'm less confident. I'm not saying that I don't think he will be the guy. I still think he can. I think, I think he will, but I'm just less confident in what I've seen this season. And of course, a lot of the season he's played at left back. There's not been as many games at centre-back. There's been some good games at centre-back when he's played there in the small sample size that we've seen. There's also been a few shaky ones as well, to be fair. So it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting for a lot of these guys because all of them look like they have the ability to maybe potentially be like the second guy. But none of them look like they're going to be the main guy. Maybe we need to go and sign a main guy to be the leader at the back. Yeah. 
No, I hear you. I agree. And I think there, there's positions that we would... I mean, if you were to pick three, say four positions, three positions that you would like Chelsea Football Club to address in the transfer window, <clears throat> what would the three areas be for you, mate? Hmm, it's interesting because like a couple of the big ones, Striker and DM, we technically like are gonna sign them next yeah. summer. Like this summer with Nkunku and Lavia, they just stay fit. Like those are the signings there in a sense, you know. But um despite Nkunku being there, we still need an actual striker, like a proper pure nine. Um Nkunku for me is more like a second striker, maybe can play on the 10 or maybe play off the left. So we need a striker for sure. Um left back is a big problem area. Um and they can probably get onto that as well because we have some players on our books that can come in and do a job at left back for yeah. sure. Um, certain ones are in a Champions League semi final again. We will get onto that soon, yeah. but um, yeah, I'll probably say striker question mark over left back. We do need a centre back, that's for sure. We need a centre back, so striker, centre back for sure. And oh, <laughs> I forgot the other was obvious one goalkeeper. We need to sign a goalkeeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right, guys. I would probably go with. Um, I would probably go with. I think we're going to need to get another. I think we're going to get rid of a centre back this season. I think we go for a centre back. Mm. I think we go for a striker, and I think we will probably go for another midfielder. No, mm. I hear all that. But I think we need a left back as well. But I, I just it just depends on what we do with Kukurai and Chilwell. If one of them goes, then yeah, we're getting a left back hundred percent. Listen, this this summer won't be too dissimilar to last summer where we made a lot of sales. Like we made a, we pretty much changed the whole squad last summer. And it's not gonna happen again, but there's still gonna be a lot of players going out again. We're gonna get quite a lot of money in. And even guys on loan like the likes of uh, Lukaku, ZH, those guys are gonna come back and then go straight away. We're not gonna keep those guys. So we're gonna get money in. Um, so we're definitely gonna have to look to spend in a lot of areas. And listen, we we have a lot of left wingers on the roster now, but is Sterling and Mudrick gonna stay? Probably one's gonna go more like more than likely Sterling. So we're gonna yeah. need a left winger more than likely. So there's a lot that needs to be reinvested in this squad to make it better because we have some good pieces, but we also have a lot of holes in the squad. And also, I think you know, you know, Dennington says here. Let's not forget backup right, right back for James is another another off season. But for me, if Reece James doesn't stay fit for the next season that we come up into, and we're only getting him for two, three months of this of the of the season, I think we've got to get rid of him. I know people are not going to like what I've got to say, but we can't keep continuing having players in the team that come back, and then a month later he's injured again. And yeah, you're right. If Reece James does get injured. We probably will have to look to bring someone in, but I also think we should probably sell him. Real Madrid will have him still. We will still make money on Reese James, mm. but at the end of the day, it just it just depends on the Reese James that returns back now for me. You know that's the difference. And if he comes back and he can keep himself fit, I think Poch needs to be clever with him. I think he needs to learn to utilize both of them because we have two top quality in him, in my opinion, two of the best right backs in the league by far, in my opinion. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. But just on that, though, I think the Reese James discourse is a bit like it's a lot of like foresight, but like we're not there yet. So let's just chill and let's see what he does if he comes back because he's seen a lot of players who have been supposedly injury prone turn it around and they can whether they have enough time off to let their body heal, whether they get the right surgery and then they they're back and able to play consistently again. Look at Ruben Loftus Cheek; he's <laughs> playing almost every single game this season for Milan. You know, it's just as an example. So we need to just chill on Reese James, and for me, like. Right back, okay, if he's, let's say, has like he's only able to play 50% of the games next season, right? That's yeah. still a big improvement on this season. That he's probably played like maybe 5%, if that. But obviously, we have Gusto there who hopefully can stay fit. But then, for me, we don't need to then buy a third right back. For me, you should have a squad where you have guys who can fill in there, whether it's um a centre-back who can fill in there. Um, yeah. Not that I'd want to spend $150 million on Casado to play right back, but we know he can play there. So again, you have these options, and with the right manager, you can make it work with different pieces to fit into the jigsaw. 100%. And in, I'm going on that because we need to move and obviously talk about the match preview. I want to talk about another bit of piece of transfer news that we heard about today. And it was from Fabrizio Romano in and around Ian Matson. And this is one that I know uh, Ads has wanted to talk about for a while. Chelsea and Ian Matson are expected to part ways in the summer as revealed in March. No changes as Chelsea are planning to make profit on Matson. Uh, uh, Matson wants to play regularly. Uh, Borussia Dortmund are very happy with the release calls at 35 million. But there's also talks that there may be other interests from other clubs. Now, the issue that Dortmund have is the release calls is 35 mil, and obviously Matz is probably happy there. But if uh, Man United comes along, Chelsea ain't putting him up for 35. He's going to be put up for, I think, 40, 45 mil 
easily in the way that he's playing at the moment. Um, mm. There will be people bidding for him for him to go. But the biggest killer in all of this is that our own coach was incompetent to allow a young player like him to at least have some minutes in a position that we, we were struggling in at the time and were playing players out of position. And he just didn't trust him. And the fact that he's now gone over to Borussia Dortmund and he's playing very well there, scored a goal in the Champions League in the semi-final, you know, showing he's, he's worth. And now we're looking to sell him. I feel a little bit quite sad because I don't really think we should be selling these young. Why do we always need to keep spending money to buy when we have such good young players that are available? Give him the time. Yeah, I think loans are good. Yeah, they might not run at Chelsea straight away, but going to a team like Dortmund, who are great at developing players, yeah, like as we can see, why then look to just? I know we've got problems with PC, PSR, and we're trying to make money, and we've you know we've got to abide by rules, and we need we need to sell. I get that, but left backs are prior, a big issue for us in the way still because Ben Chilwell can't do it. Kukurea had the problems in and out. You know, having Matson there would have been just perfect, really and truly, for that period, and it would have given him the game time as well. And I get the the, the selling from the business side, but from the, the on the pitch side and what we needed this season, which was balance. And I kept saying we need natural fullbacks, not centre backs playing fullbacks, which was what we've done this season. I feel like we've let we've let him down, but we've also also I think Potter's let us down as a club on that. So I mean mm. I know Ads has got some certain you know mindsets on this. So what what's your thought on the potentials of Matson going or signing over to Dor to Dortmund in the summer? Yeah, it's um. There's a lot to unpack there because there's a lot. There's a lot of different angles that you can look at with this. You know, first of all, there's obviously the the, the coach who has these guys for preseason. And do you can you evaluate the talent that you have there? Can you evaluate the best use for them? And can you get the best out of them? Or if we choose to not use them, or like maybe you've got better players in the squad, do we see those better players that you so deem perform in that role? And we haven't seen that at left back this season. Like we just haven't. And again, it's not just Ian Matson. It's the likes of Andre Santos, who we we decided to sub for some reason to let go one loan to to Nottingham Forest. He wasted six months there, and then he goes to uh, to Strasbourg, and we've been and in his first full month playing there, he wins Young Player of the Month, and he shows his quality. And again, Ian Matson, the most predictable, <laughs> like it was so predictable to me that he was going to go to Dortmund and light it up. Again, Ben Sibiani was at uh, Afcon for the month, um, so Ian Matson came in. And he's never looked back since. He's literally, like, he snatched that place from Ben Sabini, who's a senior player for them, and he's not looked back. He's been excellent for them, absolutely excellent for them. And again, the talent ID from Poch is, is horrible because you look at it from our perspective. Well, not only did we decide to not really use Matson, he also let Lewis Hall go to, to Newcastle. And whenever he's played for Newcastle, he's looked good now. People always say to me, oh, but he's not playing week in, week out for Newcastle. And that's because, like, everybody should know. It's well documented. They have their financial problems. And they know if they play Hall a certain amount of games, then they're going to be obligated to buy him. And they don't, want to, they don't really want to commit to buying him right now because they have a lot of financial constraints. Um, but again, Newcastle fans, every time they see Hall play, he's looked great. But again, that's Hall. We had Ian Matson there. However... Yeah. We've hardly used him. We've had Chilwell, he's been injured for so long, and we know that the discourse on Chilwell right now, a lot of fans are not convinced by him. You have also Cucurella, who we spent £62 million on, mm. and he's not looking convincing at all either. And yet you've got a homegrown talent here in Ian Madsen, who has come on off a great season with Burnley, got promoted, left back of the season in the, in the Championship, a physical league. Why not give him a chance to show himself in the Premier League? And again, you look from a tactical point of view, this guy... Is so is so versatile. Again, he can play inverted. He's also got the ability to overlap as well. But yet, Poch was playing him at right wing, playing him at right wing. Like you hardly gave him any chances to play at, at fullback. One of the only chances I remember was when he had to come on right wing back against Brighton at home. This was the game where uh, Gallagher got stupidly recorded, and like we were in we were in the slums at this point, right? But you needed to just get a win by any means necessary. Yeah. Last twenty minutes, he came on at right wing back. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Again, um. Matson came out now right wing back to lock up Matoma. To lock up Matoma. And he did a job and he helped us see that game out. But was he rewarded with any minutes regularly after that? No, he wasn't. And it's again, it's crazy to me that he was treated like this. And again, I'm just happy for the kid himself that was able to go to Dortmund and shine because I've seen United fans who are only watching Dortmund for Sancho for similar reasons again, ousted by their club. And they're watching they're watching Sancho perform for Dortmund. And they're like, yo, this Matson guy's good. That's why he plays for Chelsea. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> he does. And we let him go. To be playing flipping the Sarsi at left back and Cold Water left back and all this nonsense. So it's crazy. Again, it's another reason why me and uh and Poch are scuffing. 
if it, if I see him at on site <laughs> because the, the managing decisions this season have been awful, and that's one of the biggest ones. So, again, we'll see what happens in the summer with him. Um, thirty five million again is pure profit, pure profit, pure profit, which is great. Pure profit is great, but if you're having pure profit in a position and you get that money in cool, but if you're then playing players who aren't good enough for the club, what does that money mean? Especially when you spent 62 million on Cucurella. It doesn't mean anything to me. So, Yeah, and yeah. I think that's a real big issue. I think we have overspent on players in you know previous summer windows, and I think we, we, we are suffering a little bit from it. And I think when you look at what we have in-house and homegrown, yes, there's that value to Corman because you know that you can sell them for profit and a bit of English tax. And, you know, someone like Max and Gallagher, you know, a couple of players that have been, been been mentioned are ones that could be used for us to, you know, sustain our profit, for profitability margins or get to our profitability margins is what, what we need to do. And I get that. But, you know, the issue I have in all of it is, like we just said here, like he's not really been given an opportunity. It doesn't seem like he's going to be given any any real opportunities now in the future. He's, still, he's took off in Dortmund. He's probably settled himself as a player. He's probably settled there in Dortmund and thought, you know what? This is my home. I'm playing regularly. I'm going to get it here. And there was an actual interview with him. Um, and it, it was on Twitter. I wish I'd pull it up, actually. And he, this is why I was at Dortmund. And he said, I wish I was given the opportunity at Chelsea a bit more. And he's just, you know, given. And he, he made it very clear. He just wasn't getting the game time. He goes, I needed football. Mm. Like, and I wasn't getting it. And I just, he goes, you know, he, he loves Chelsea. He generally loves Chelsea. He wants to play for Chelsea. He said, I want to play for Chelsea. But if you, if, you know, if you've got specific players in front of you, if um, if you've got a manager that doesn't trust you, he doesn't vision you in the team. What are you meant to do? You know, from a from a business standpoint, it makes sense for us to sell thirty five million in the back pocket. Done. That's very good business. Maybe even more if he goes somewhere else. But you know, you look at what we got there and why we, and we're selling him, and you think, well, Chilwell is a bit like James can't keep himself fit, and then you've got Kukurea, who is just average. He's not great, is he? Let's be serious. He's just, for, since he's been at Chelsea, he's been average and he's been given us average performances. And I don't really know if he's the right the right left back for us moving forward. I think he'd be a good second left back, but for what we spent of him, he can't be that. He has to play. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, players are playing because of their price tags all the time. And it's just like, did we need to spend that money? Probably not. Could we have just had Maxson instead? Yeah. Use, you know, this is where we need the recruitment and the scouts and like everyone to be able to see that the ones that are at this club are maybe needing them just a bit more time or whatever. I don't know, but it's it's going to be interesting to see where this club is in the next two to three years for me, how it's formalised, how it looks. Is it going to be a squad of a bunch of players that we just pump tons of money in, which gives you that sniff of Roman Abramovich style-esque? Or is it going to be a, 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 you know, is it going to be a squad where we spent bits or, you know, bits of money here and there, but predominantly been built around, you know, players that are in around or, or coming through Chelsea or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Or we've got good little deals on or whatever. That That's the question mark. I think we'll have to see in the next two to three years time. Um, Tob says, all we want to is see is the same team. So that'd be Everton. No more Gallagher, Cam or left wing, play him central midfield and we win. Yeah, that, we're going to talk about the game now in a second. Obviously, we spoke about Matt, and I've got one more bit of transfer news that I want to just quickly have, um, just quickly highlight. Um, and it's the, um, it's the... Where is it? Why does it do this? I hate when it does this. Um, I can't find it. It's there. Can I see it? Right, there we go. It's this, it's, a, it's this little bit of comments. That's what I'm going to call it. Talk in around Victor Osmin. Osmin how do you even say his surname? Osimhen. Oshiman. 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 Okay, there we go. Victor Oshiman. There we go. Victor Oshiman. Okay, Chelsea have already started discussions with Napoli for Victor Oshiman, but they are moving slowly. And these are comments that say from court offside, but this is supposedly Fabrizio Romano's quoted words, which is what they've used here as well. Um, we know that we need a striker. The availabilities of him is they apparently Arsenal pulled out of this. I don't know how true that is. Um there's Gakaris, Gakaris. I don't know how to say his name as well. Gakaris, the guy from um, is it? At, where is he? Atlanta. Uh, sport in Lisbon. You're talking about um, Gakaris. Uh, that's it. Or Gakaris. Again, it's a different, it's different pronunciations of it, but but yeah. There's also, there's also talks around Ivan Tony being available for around forty million all in as well, 
which is another interesting uh, topic. There's also talks about the potentials of an Ollie Watkins as well being bought for God knows how much. I don't know what his market value would be. I'd have to check that in a bit. But Ollie Watkins being available, maybe looking for maybe a bigger move as well. Um, the striker error ads is a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Because, you know, a lot of people will say this guy. Some others will say, well, he's not polished enough for 130 million. He's, you know, he's, there's parts of his game he needs to work on. We need something else. Others might want Tony. Some I've seen have said uh, Sesco, who I've watched and I'm not that fond of, I'll be quite honest with you, and Kakares. You know, what Watkins has popped up as well as being Premier League proven. What's your thoughts in and around the striker area? There is some good options there, but who would be your sort of go-to guy, in your opinion? Mm, well, I mean, first things first, we have to understand what we, we're trying to do, right? And oh, again, well, yeah. um, like we have to understand like, what manager we're going to get in, like what the sporting director wants. Like for me, like we should have a clear understanding of how we want to play based on the sporting director. We need to get in a manager that fits that philosophy. And then we need to get the, the, the right pieces that fit that manager and what they want and what our, our style of play is going to be. Are we a team that wants to whip a lot of crosses into the box? Are we a team that wants a striker to maybe have a bit of hold up play a bit more? Do you want a striker that just wants to run in behind a lot? Like we have to look at all these things and then pick the best striker. Unfortunately for me, I think a lot of people like are saying it otherwise, but I actually think that the striker market this summer is actually pretty decent. Like I think there's a lot of good options out there and a lot of variety in the options that are out there as well. You have, um, quality level. Quality, quali levels, you think quality and proven level is yeah. is questionable for sure. Yeah. But again, we're not in a position where we can just go and buy the best striker on the market, which technically would be Mbappe, right? Um or of course, he could obviously play left wing, but like that's the best striker on the market. But are we in the market to go and get him? No, he's going to go to Real Madrid. But um, again, if you just really look at the names that are potentially available, Oshiman, Tony, um, Gio Carres, um, potentially Solanke, who came through at Chelsea, um, yeah, Oli yeah, Watkins. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah. Isak. Isak's the one I was actually been highest on for the longest out of all of these guys, ironically. Like top, top level striker. But for me, I just look at the injury record and it doesn't leave me with a lot of confidence. But that said, talent-wise, he's got the best goal per minute ratio in, in the Premier League in terms of strikers. And in terms of like his link-up ability, um, holding up play as well, like he's, he's top, man. I, I love Isak. But again, to get him out of Newcastle, who to be fair, are looking to sell players by, if you if you um, listen and believe everything that you're seeing in terms of media reports, Isak would, is, a, is an interesting one as well. But um. Yeah, there's options out there for sure. But again, it just, for me, comes down to what manager we're going to bring in and how they want to play. Because we've seen it with Lukaku and Werner, who, yes, they had their limitations. And ultimately, what they did in the Chelsea shot wasn't good enough anyways to be given a lot of like, oh, they only failed because of how the team, the team was around them. No, they, they also failed because they were just straight up poor. They went up to, up to the level like what they've shown in previous clubs. However, you have to also ask the question, did we play to their strengths? Did we play enough balls in behind to Werner? Like, no, we didn't. There were a lot of times where Werner's making the run and then we had midfielders who were turning back on it or just going out wide and playing the safe pass. So yeah. we didn't do that. When it came to Lukaku, we know he's a guy who needs service. <laughs> we know that. But yeah, he's we didn't feed him with a lot of service. So, um, oh yeah, we do We do need to sell him as well. <laughs> By the way, and get some money back for him. Sell him. Um, so again, like, it does whole, like, we've seen, you need to still play to strike a strength. Like, we're looking at Harlem right now at Man City, who... Are they playing to his strengths? Not necessarily. Now, obviously, he's still a top striker. He's still going to get you his goals, but they're not really playing to his strengths. We're not seeing the same Haaland that we saw at Dortmund. So um, all these things you have to take into account before you buy who you want to buy because there are a lot of strikers out there who are getting a lot of goals. 100%. And it's, it's again, what do we need and how does it fit our profile? I saw talks about Musiala potentially being an option for Chelsea. And the first thing I said was, why? Like, like, why are we looking at that position specifically right now? Yeah, it would be nice. Palmer, Musiala, you know, Palmer, Musiala, and Kunku, and then a striker out front. But, I, you know, Musiala is going to cost you 130, 40 more million. It don't make sense in terms of profile of player and what we need. And I keep saying it. We've done the same thing when we bought Lukaku back then, and I was arguing with 90% of this fan base about it. And they were saying, he's, he's, we just need him. He scores goals. You know, he's quality. He's the top, top goal scorer in Europe. How can you not want him? One season, smashed it. And I said, I don't think he fits Tuchel's profile of what we're trying to do. It just, I just don't think he will do the hard work off the ball. I don't think he will link play well enough. And yes, he scored goals. Don't get me wrong. He, he scored goals here and there. You know, you expect that a little bit. But 
you know, he didn't fit the overall balance of the squad, even though the balance of the squad was crap anyway, with the amount of different type of profile players we bought. But it didn't work. And my only real worry with the striker position going into this summer window is is finding the right profile rather than just looking at the stats, yeah, and going, oh, he's top goal scorer in Europe right now. He's hot. We just need to get him. It's, you know, it's more, and they talk about data analytics and doing all of their checks and whatever. So you think there'll be a lot more technical with the decisions when looking for a striker. But I just, I don't know, like he's going to be obviously up there anyway. And I think it sounds like he, he you know, he likes the idea of being in London, playing, you know, playing for the potentially Chelsea and stuff. And I get all that, but I try and think of what this player can do and what he can offer and what we have currently at the moment and how it can work, how we can bring the balance together stronger so that we're more consistent, that we're now creating, even though we're creating, we're now converting, you know, and we, and, and this individual is able to do other bits to, you know, I'll have other bits to his games as well. And if Nkunku can stay fit, yeah, and you get yourself a top quality striker, you've got yourself two killers in the box. That will be completely different, different type of Chelsea when we are creating, because you will see a better conversion. And people like Palmer, who are second highest assisters in the Premier League at the moment, you know, or joint second highest assistant in the Premier League will then have even more, you know, even more. That's what I love about Palmer as well, his creativity. Yeah. And he should have had more assists. <laughs> he should do. So, you know, it's it's picking the right person. You know, I've always been very big for Ivan Tony, just because, and it's not because I think he's an, a great out-and-out goal scorer. I think he can score goals, and I think he would score more in a more... Um, in a team that creates more, who dom dominates more, I think he would fit the bill in terms of the creative side, the linking up side, the being able to hold the ball and, and be, you know, just be just occupied defenders, which means that people like Palmer or Mudrick or Nkunku can, you know, dip in behind. And I, these are all things I look at when it comes to thinking of a striker, not just getting the box bang, which is what we need. We need that killer instinct. We want goals. And I think he would do it. So it's what else they can for the team if that makes sense and, and like what forward said or ad said is the uh the type of manager we've got as well so i'm a bit i get Watkins as well by the way a little bit and isaac's another one i think is good as well i think Watkins is good but i just don't know if he's i'd, ch I'd choose tony over him still but i don't know what you guys think on that mm, i think Watkins is a very good transitional striker um like his hold up play has gotten better this season in terms of so i should know it's not his hold up play, his link up play it's gotten better this season working off the likes of um DRB and Bailey. But yeah, I just feel like I'd want somebody who's got a bit of a better technical base because for the players that we have, regardless yeah. of who the manager is next season, again, people are saying that Poch will stay, not based on what they want. I hope at least. I hope people understand Poch isn't good enough, <laughs> you know. Um, but maybe this board will still allow him to stay, which I, I would hate. Right. But I feel like regardless of Poch staying and let's say he wants to play this transitional game or whatever, like we still have a lot of technical players who I feel like would benefit of having a striker who can hold it up but then also a link play, get others into get others involved. Because you saw it with Lukaku, like yeah. we don't want that kind of striker where they can't they don't have the ability to link up. It's like that's it's not it's not good, especially when you've got players like especially Palmer trying to run off and make things happen. I mean Kunku if he was to stay and, and, and plays as a turn, not stay but like actually stay fit. Um yeah. That would be a yeah. big thing, you know. So um, we'll see, man. We'll see. Again, there's options out there. There's a lot of options out there. Well, yeah. Before we go to Xavi, guys, and get his thoughts in there, I just that has just come back to me as well. Obviously, we lost a a big a supporter of Chelsea Football Club, someone that was uh, was passionate, someone that was uh, a very interesting character, a very nice person, by the way. I've actually been on live with him as well uh, and spoke to him off air as well. Angry Ramp Man um, passed away, um, which we've everyone's heard the news all across Twitter. Um, and yeah, RIP to Angry Rent Man. What a guy, what a legend. Big up to him, man. It's very, very sad news. He was still very young as well. Um, and my thoughts, yeah, only 27. Family. Yeah, my thoughts with his family and everything as well, man. But yeah, I, everyone, RIP, RIP's in the chat, guys. RIP to Mr. Rent Man, guys. Um, yeah, thoughts with his family, but Xavi, um, just talk obviously before we get into the game, we're just quickly talking about the striker area. It talks about Victor Osh Osh Oshiman being someone that could be at, you know, be at the club still. Chelsea are working a bit slowly on him as well, but there's other names that have been linked as well. I mean, what's your thoughts on the striker position, mate? What's, what, who are you looking for? Um, uh, we like, we need a striker, guys. There's no if and what are about it. But the profile of strikers is important, like you said. And 
my fault. My kid is. I got to put Mr. Rachel on him for the background. Um, I think we need someone who is involved in the game, regardless if they're if we're not creating chances for him. Like I don't know, Chelsea always survived off of that striker, that like at the Costas, the drug was. I mean, I think now we've kind of changed into where we're creating a bit more. So we got Palmer, we're adding creativity, we're creating a high profile number of chances, but I still want a striker, like, how do I explain it? Like someone like Tony, that even if he's not, even if he's not scoring, he's occupying those defenders, you know, can, hold, can lead the line by himself, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking for. Oh, man, like, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, no. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I know he bangs. But I feel like if we have the right group around him, like, I feel like so much of our strikers have flopped because our structure around wasn't right. We don't, we didn't create a lot of chances and we struggled. We struggled with that for years. Let's be yeah. honest. Like, creativity and creating clear cut chances for our strikers. That's why only the drug was in the cost to survive. But yeah, like I, I like I feel like he would suit us way better than Usherman. But Usherman is still a, a goal scorer at the end of the day. Like you know what I mean? So yeah. if you provide him the chances he will score his goals. But yeah. I, I'm in more favor of like a guy like Tony because our go Karez because they're still involved in the game, you know? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. All right, guys, we're going to move away from transfer news um, for now. We will be doing a lot more of it. Trust me, we're going to be getting Ben Jacobs on as well to talk a bit about a bit about the financial side of Chelsea as well, from what we've been hearing uh, at some point. Um, and yeah, lots of transfer news. We're going to have a busy summer, guys. It's going to be a very busy, busy channels for both channels. Really, we're going to be a lot. We're going to be alive a lot more bringing in news over the summer period once we get there. But first of all of that, guys, we've got a lot of stuff going on on the pitch. And we do have the match against uh, Man City in the semi-finals of the FA Cup at Wembley again tomorrow. And it's going to be Chelsea's, is it 30th time at the stadium? Let's have a quick look. Yeah. Saturday will be the 30th time Chelsea have visited the new Wembley. Um, this is more than any other side in that time. Neutral venue only. Another big semi-final to to come up against against Man City as well. Um, on the back of this, before we get into like, we're going to do a quick lineup and stuff as well. There was talks around how Chelsea played against Everton and, and there was this comment here that Alice thought the game against Everton was very good and the club has taken note of how much the attacking numbers have improved compared to Potter. Um, some Chelsea teams have asked for more consistency to show what they can do on a, a more regular basis. The club is hopeful of a better T6, T7 period as well, um, which will again goes back to him being a bit more consistent. When it comes to team news, we've not had the press conference yet, but one thing that did pop up today is this picture of him smiling. Mr. Reese James is back and he is training and whether he's going to make it back in time for this game, I probably highly doubt it. However, will he be making some making some uh, appearances but at the, you know near to the end of the season. That could happen. Um, good to have Reese James back, as we already know. Madwaki also with Pochettino as well, working towards their, their game at Wembley as well, which is uh, tomorrow. Can't show that, which is tomorrow. Um, and then there's this question mark. And the one real question mark at the moment is, and we all know and we've heard the news about, it's Enzo Fernandez, who at the moment is suffering from a, a hernia issue. Apparently he's been having injections most of the season to just play for us at the moment as well. And it seems that apparently Pochettino is still unsure on whether he should bring Enzo Fernandez back in the starting eleven against Man City and hasn't decided until tomorrow. Um, this, you know, we've not had any confirmation on press conferences or, or anything as of yet. Um, will Enzo feature? We'll see. So if he doesn't, then there's a good chance Gallagher will play in the pivot again with Caicedo and we could maybe see the same sort of lineup as we saw against Everton up against Man City, which could be interesting. And this is where I throw it to the guys because it's a big game tomorrow. Um, Pochettino is in in his, when you look at this season and how he set us up against the bigger teams, has always gone a little bit more defensive with the three in the midfield, Enzo, Caicedo, Gallagher. Do you feel that and I'll go with I'll go let's go with let's go with couch first because he's a couch big up bro how you doing you right see you yeah 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 you guys can hear me yeah we can hear you bro we can hear you um big, big in regards to tomorrow's game 
In in in, in regards big up, to bro, tomorrow, man, big up. In oh, regards, yeah, in to, in regards to tomorrow's game tomorrow, bro. Do you see Poch forcing Enzo Fernandez back in the team along with Caicedo and Gallagher, or do you think there might be a, maybe a stubbornness to stick to what we've done against Everton with the two in the midfield and maybe a Palmer in the ten and just literally have a go at them? Uh, you know how I stay. I'm always about horses for courses. Uh, the game against Everton is nothing close to what you're going to get against Man City. Yeah. Nothing close. And to assume that just because it worked against Everton is going to work against Man City is uh, a fool's trait to assume that you can play the same employ the same tactics and get the same results. It's just not the same game at all. Um, the Everton game, I mean... It was evidenced at the halftime when they switched their entire midfield because they're getting blown apart in the middle. Um, that's not going to happen against Man City, regardless of who play. So we're going to need people that are good on the ball. We're going to be able to have people that can transition, get you know, get out and run. Um, I would think that if Enzo's fit, he comes back into the side. Um, the question we have to ask is whether or not he's fit. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's true that he is. Sure, he's training, but um, you know, like Wembley's one of the biggest pitches in in the world, and it's going to be a lot of ground to cover. Can he can he make up the the distances and whatnot? That's that's the question I think we need to ask before we start thinking about you know styles of play and what we want to do. Is can he be fit enough to like play on that Wembley pitch right now? It's still up in the air sure. for me. Well, apparently he's just had the same issue all season with the hernia. You know, he's actually just been having injections and he needs an operation. Surgery will give him a two weeks out, about three weeks out, apparently, from doing that. Um, the timing of it's probably the critical bit. Do they wait till the end of the season and just keep him in the team and then get him to do it? Obviously, it's Copa America at the end of this end of this season as well, which would maybe playing on the mind of it, of, of both, the, you know, the country and himself. But... Yeah, I think we listen. We've not had the press conference from Poch yet, and it would probably be one of the questions that's asked. But I mean, talking about Man City quickly forward, I mean, they got knocked out of the Champions League. Um, they still look like Man City, you know, in, in many ways. Um, I mean, how do you think they're going to approach us tomorrow? Do you think they're just going to do their typical same setup? Is there, is there a chance maybe Pep might complicate it again and maybe just leave? Rodri on his own in midfield, and maybe like a De Bruyne and I don't know someone else, and go quite attacking. Like, how do you feel? How do you feel that they're going to approach the game tomorrow against us? Well, uh, for a start, I did watch the the Champions League exit against. Um, who wants to got a call coming in? You got a bit quiet, is it me? Can you hear him? Is it me or is he low? Yeah, he sounds low. Yeah, it's, it's low. Can you guys hear me now? Can yeah, you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, I had yeah. a call coming in. Um. So technically on the clock, but uh, we're working through it. Um, but no, um, yeah. So I did watch the uh, I did watch the City game uh, midweek. Um, I did watch yeah. the the Champions League exit, and um, yeah, happy to see that they are still only on one Champions League. Uh, we have one more, um, courtesy of beating them in the Champions League final. Just had to get that in. But no, um, listen for this game. Listen, it's Pep and it's Man City. They're still the best team in the world. That doesn't change based on losing to Rumajan on penalties. Um, they're a top top team. It's going to be interesting to see what they do because obviously they've gone to 120 minutes. It's only a two-day recovery in between and there's supposedly some injuries. So we'll see how they set up. I, I expect rotation, but I don't think that is like, that's a positive for us because I feel like the players that are going to be taken out have been a bit of a detriment to them in recent games. And I, I can see the likes of Alvarez coming in up front. Um, I could see potentially Doku starting. Um, I can see a few things going on. Maybe even Coden starting in the 10 compared to being out wide. So, um, it's going to be interesting, right? Because when we played them twice this season, Alvarez has started by in midfield. And I feel like we were able to benefit from that because I don't think he's great in that midfield role. Um, and again, like those games, we obviously competed well, which gives me confidence, right? I don't see us getting like absolutely destroyed, right? I feel like we're going to be competitive. I think there's a very good chance we're competitive. However, it's very difficult to get over the line in a big game when you haven't got the experience, you haven't got the proven consistent match winners. Because again, we've seen all season, we've we've lacked in terms of cutting edge. Yes, we scored more goals than last season, which is great. But in terms of reliable clinical efficiency in front of goal, we don't have that at uh, a great level. Other than Cole Palmer, who again he's been doing his thing, fair play. But uh, other than him, there's nobody that we can rely upon to say that he's definitely going to bag if a chance comes. And obviously in defense, we've had a lot of big mistakes. So that 
obviously is something we have to take into consideration. And obviously the Enzo conversation is a very interesting one because we've gone into every single big game this season having Enzo, Casado, and Gallagher available. And they've started every single big game this season. Um, of course, on the, on the other side of that, we've not had any other midfielders available, so we've always had to use those guys. And now with Enzo not available, it's not like Hugo Chiku's back or Lavi is suddenly fit. No, it's just Gallagher and Casado. And if we're going to start with just them two, like, and then you start an attack in front four. Again, like Couch said, you can't compare the Everton game and say, that, oh, that front six worked great. Um, even if Enzo's fit, that's going to keep him on the bench. Like, that front six worked against Everton, so it's going to do the same against City. No, it's a completely different game. <laughs> like A lot of this game is going to be played in our half. So I'm um, going to have to look at, obviously, the transition. Where is best exactly. to put Palmer? Which, again, we'll talk about if we're, if we're going to put Palmer false nine or do we want him to be more involved in the game? So we're going to play him on the right again. Then where does that leave Noni Madiweke, who for me has been the most impressive winger of our uh, three with him, Sterling and Mudrick. So it's mm-hmm. interesting. There's a lot of things that we're going to have to talk about and discuss in terms of how we um, we set out. But certainly, I think we're going to have to do two lineups, one with Enzo and one, so one with Enzo available on what we would select and then one we would select if Enzo is deemed not fit. Okay. Interesting stuff. And if he isn't fit, and we're going to do one now anyway, we'll do both actually. It'd be interesting to know. I mean, before we go into that, Xavi, big game tomorrow. Um, how, how do Chelsea, how do you think Chelsea beat City tomorrow? <laughs> well, it's probably going to be in transition. We're not dominating the ball against City is hard. You know what I mean? They're like the masters of it. They control the game, the tempo, but at where City have been weak, and I've seen that Real Madrid game, is when they turn the ball over. For some reason, they sent, seem this year to send out. I mean, they've been doing it, but I feel like they're not as good as recovering. You know, you can play through their press better. And on transitions, we have the guys of, like, Jackson. Same how we played that Etihad, at the Etihad. I yeah. feel like we should kind of go for that, you know. Try try to be more brave, at least a little bit more brave for the FA Cup, but if we're going to beat them, it's definitely on the transition. Like when they're attacking and, you know, yeah. establishing that territory. Well, dominance. If it's on the transition, does that not, do you not think we then need the pace? And with the pace, you're going to need Jackson leading the line. And then Jackson maybe... is playing for me regardless. You know what I mean? Oh, there's no yeah, way you're, 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 you're sitting Jackson. It's, it's, it's yeah, Jackson. Play. And to me, it's the only, <clears throat> like, all right, you got, regardless of how you feel, Gallagher does a job on that. We're going to need to take Roger at the game. Like that's is a, that's key. Can Palmer Unless, do that if he plays in the ten? In the ten, pa, Palmer is good off the ball, but it's it's like you need them the legs that Gallica has. You know what I mean? And you want you don't want you don't want our best player to be so occupied on marking Roger out the game because that kind of takes away from his game. We kind of need him. And those am, am I not? Mis- am, am I am I mistaken in thinking that the last game we played against City, Roger wasn't playing? He scored against us. He scored, didn't he? He's there. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because so, I remember, I remember they played with uh, with uh, Ikanji uh, in in the midfield that game, right? Yeah, well, they're here. They've got Walker, Akanji, Diaz, and Ake as their back four. But Akanji wasn't. No, it was Rodri, Foden, De Bruyne, Alvarez, Doku, and Haaland. That was their their, their front. Us, on the other hand, was De Sassi, Colwell, Chilwell, Gusto as a back, and then Caicedo, Enzo. Gallagher, Palmer, Sterling was on the left, and Jackson up front. Sterling scored, if you remember. And and that game was at uh, was at the bridge, right? No, no it was at, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. remember, man. And we got the draw. That, right? Yeah, that that yeah. we both drove with the four. The one one was our. I think we had it better control because we were defending well. Yeah, I just yeah. think we went too defensive too early. I mean, they were. Let's be honest. City always threaten you and push you back. But like the moment we went five, we invited even more pressure, and then Roger scored. You know, right. but that was um that was the game we're talking about how Gallagher kept Roger quiet. Right. Uh, so you just stuck uh, on him the entire game. Like I remember that. I did a match review for that. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Most. Mo- yeah. Because well, it, it basically that, that that tactic forced them to uh forced them to use other guys to yeah play with, play around him. Yeah. Right. So my- and like none of those guys were capable. Yeah. Wow. Well. No. Well, well, my next question to you guys would be, and again, it, we'll do two. We'll do a 4 3 3 and then we'll do a 4 2 3 1. Lineup going into the game tomorrow. Now, defensively, we saw Thiago Silva and Chalaba um, against Everton. Now, it's a little bit different when you're up against Haaland, isn't it? Um, 
So I would ask you, is Kukurea's playing? Do we agree? Even though Chilwell's fit? I think that's probably going to happen, isn't it? If Kukurea's starting on the left, do we agree? Uh, I'm leaning towards starting uh, Chilwell, you know. I can't lie. I think just for the centre-backs that I'm probably going to choose, I feel like Chilwell's extra height would, would help. And listen, Kukurea has been okay of recent, better, but I still worry about him defensively. And um, I have a feeling that potentially Doku... Oh, for sure. Like, again, people make it out that Cucurella's bad defensively and Chilwell's good. Like, no, Cucurella for me Chilwell's is bad and Chilwell bad. isn't near the levels that he was under Tuchel. Nowhere near the levels before the injury. Um, So, again, I worry about both, but I just feel like with Chilwell's extra little bit of athleticism, which he still has left even after the injury, plus the um, aerial ability, I feel like that can help us. Because I don't see us being on the ball as much. But at the same time, Again, City with their press. Again, we're not Man United, right? Man United, when they went to Etihad, they just literally parked the bus. There was no trying to play out through the press. We will try and do that. And Cucurella is better at doing that than Chilwell. So I wouldn't be mad if Cucurella started. Um, I'm leaning towards Chilwell, but again, why if you guys would say Cucurella will no, start, then I'm not, I'm not I, I, too mad the at reason, The reason why I can't see Chilwell is like we're playing at Wembley. He's been off for how many weeks now? You're going to start him against at Wembley? against Man City when he hasn't played for, for what, more than a month? It just doesn't make sense. No, he's come back and played a couple of games off the bench, but you're right, it is only off the the bench compared to starting. Yeah, and and even still, and even still, he wasn't even playing what? what, Wasn't he playing left wing the the last game he came in? It just seems Mm. like it's not the right, it's not the right game to give him, uh, you know, a full start. You know, it would make sense in Mm. a lesser match at this point in time. If he would have started last game, I probably would have been more inclined to give him those minutes, but you're not going to put him in at Etihad against like these difficult, you know, these difficult uh, wingers and whatnot. And just like the setup in itself and expect him to, you know, perform well for you. It just, Mm. I'm just thinking more of the psychology of the game more so than like what, you know, well, I, who I'd rather have and who I wouldn't want to have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just to add to that, listen, I'm happy with Cucurella being there. I think that's who will start anyways. I think Poch will pick Cucurella. Um, I was just more going off the fact that, again, um, again, I think his skill set maybe suits this game a bit better. Plus the two games that we did play against them this season, which we can look at, Cucurella started at home. And not just because we could yeah. see the 4 he was worse, but I just felt like he struggled a lot, especially when Harlan they go over to that side. Um, yeah. He didn't look great. And I thought, sure, well, to be fair, Stam- um, at Etihad, I thought he had a pretty good game, to be honest. We had a pretty good game, but you're right. Cucurella probably will likely most start, and most likely will start. And yeah, he's in a rhythm. He's in okayish form, so yeah, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I got an assist last game too, right? Something like that. So we'll yeah, see. Got a yeah, assists lately. Yeah, one a penalty. Yeah, yeah. He's been doing yeah, all right. The, the the matchup for me is is more in the middle. Like who who do you see as being the two center backs that we go to um, to nullify? To nullify what they do well, you know, playing through those channels, mm. you know, controlling the tempo in that, you know, that final third, and and really playing playing at a tempo that most defenses cannot cope with, right? So that that's that's the word for me. Um, mm. Over overrunning a certain area of the pitch and whatnot. That's yeah, that that's basically where I'm, I'm most most concerned, and like that center back pairing has to be right. Um, I don't know, like I don't know what you guys think. Are we guaranteed to play with a back? Four. This is something else I was I was thinking about, you know, because I'm thinking if Enzo isn't fit, like we're not gonna throw a Cassidy in. I just don't see it. Right. Um, so we're gonna have to have Gallagher playing in the six, but then he's gonna do the Gallagher role on on a Rodri, and I feel like playing a, a front four of including Modric and a Noni and one wing Palmer ten Jackson is attacking, but the defensive cover isn't the greatest. So I would probably be looking at maybe going to a back five, but have we seen a lot of that? Not really. So no. it's. It's an interesting one, but it's something to definitely to consider. I think Poch definitely will consider it. He's not going to just like not put Port into the biggest game of the season at this point. You know, he's going to obviously consider things. So um, we'll see. But um, on a centre back, I don't know what Javi thinks on this as well. But like for me, Chalaba would not even have come into my consideration before the Everton game because yeah, he's had some decent ish games, but I still feel like there's a bit of defensive frailty, not great in the air. But like, these are weaknesses that he has. But mm-hmm. he was solid in the air against Everton. Like we did concede a lot of set pieces, like from free kicks and corners, and he actually defended very well, and um, yeah. played some good offside traps as well. Defended the front post quite well at times. So I thought he had he overall had a very solid game. So I would consider him. But then you also you look at the Sarsi, who I believe is fit. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he is fit, and um, mm-hmm. we saw how good a game he did have at the Etihad. And obviously he's a good box defender. 
he has the physicality to go up against a Haaland if he does start, because I think there's a chance that Alvarez does start this game. But we know that Haaland struggles against those physical centre-backs. So it's um, we do have options there. But again, for me, I think the one person who has to start is Thiago Silva, because for me, it's it's almost an own goal. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you don't start your most experienced player in a game like this at Wembley against City, when for the most part, we're going to defend in a, not in a low block, but we're going to defend quite deep and be compact. So I feel like that minimises the weaknesses that Silva has with his mobility. And again, his experience is um, that you can't quantify, you can't um, put a price tag on the experience that he's going to have and how much of a value that's going to be to this young team at Wembley against, against, against the best team in the world. So I think we're going to need yeah, that. Yeah, when you talk about and when you talk about defending deep, like it's not because we're going to be setting up a low block. It's basically because we're going to be pressed back. You know, we're not going to be able to like, you know, basically thrust as many body forwards as we want. We're going to be in a position where City are going to control the game with us set back deep. And and to 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 your point, I agree. I don't think that in that setup, like the the worry I have with with Chalaba, I thought I thought he had a good game against uh, Everton um, for the reasons you said. Very good in the air, you know, snuffed out most of the danger. You know, played some good traps. You, you, we we talked about it in the in the chat too. Like uh, just the the one where where I think uh, Bettel scored, and he held a good line there. Uh, that was a great line. line. Yeah, but um, I think um, my worry in games like this is concentration and composure and that's always been his achilles heel always has always has a mistake in him you know and when you're going to be put under that much pressure for as long as you are against a team like city i worry about him in those positions i'm not gonna lie um Mm. but that but to to your point though i i worry about that with every every one of our center backs not named tiago (laughs) silva so it's like like you see with chala the couch like it's the fundamentals for me sometimes where like you should be clearing it with your foot and he's going down for a header or like going to ground when you, you should be standing on your feet. That is not necessary. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that that I worry about, which is that whether it's down to concentration where I just think it's just fundamental. But I, I don't know. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. about this to parent. I just know I, I do want Silva in the game. Like, I think. Oh, that goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you sorry, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry, go finish ahead. I'll be back, guys. Finish off. No, 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 right. no, I mean, back. listen, I've just I've just seen something in the chat which not it's not triggered me, but I'm thinking like I don't like okay. So Jared just said in the chat, Cookerwood is way better defensively than Chilwell. What's this bloke talking about? Right? Like again, for me, when I look at Cookerwood defensively, especially on the wing, like one v one defending on the wing, he struggles a lot with any fullback that goes at him directly now. Again, that wasn't the questions asked of him against Everton because it was Ashley Young playing on the wing, which almost never mm-hmm. happens in 2024. So he's not going right. to test you in the way that he would have done 10 years ago, right? Um, so I just struggle I just struggle with him if he was to play against uh, a Doki because we have seen Doki at times come on and play on the right just for, for little portions of the game. And, cook, and Doki will cook, 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 I have no doubt about that. Again, like I mentioned earlier, Chilwa isn't great defensively either, but he's not shown that consistency that he had under Tuchel when he won the Champions League. But... I don't know what you think, Couch. If you think, if you if you think one's certainly better than the other defensively, and also what you think of Cucurella one v one. I mean, this this goes kind of like dovetails off the the striker debate, and uh, we're talking about bringing in the striker. It sounds like what we're saying is any striker will do, you know. Like, and I'm not necessarily of that mindset, but in terms of like left back position right now, none of them are good enough. You're basically just going yeah. on whoever's most informed. Like, who is in form at this point in time, right? And just hoping that, you know, they 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 are mistake-free at this point in time. But it's mm. it's pick your poison. I don't necessarily think that whether or not you play Cucurella, he's going to be better defensively because I feel like sometimes when he's in that position, you know, he doesn't know – he has no, no spacing. He doesn't understand, like, uh, the spacing that you need to, to offend him for. Actually, he's getting too touch tight, and then he doesn't have the makeup speed to get – to get in be, to get back into position, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. often, yeah. often mistimes his tackles or mistimes his his approaches to close space and whatnot. And he's just getting caught, he gets caught out time and time again. With with Chilwell, I just think that he gets dribbled past so easily. So, so easily. Like it's like, okay, let's in a lot of crosses. Yeah, it's just so it's just, Are we agreeing I don't on know. this? Are we agreeing on I don't this? Know. 
Yeah, we oh, decided on Kukurilla good. and Thiago yeah. Silva, and then we were just debating between Chalaba, who obviously was great against Everton, versus the Sarsi if he's fully fit. And um, I'm going to give my vote, and I'm going to actually say Chalaba should start. I, think gonna, gonna... I don't think he's going to start him, though. I think he's going to start the Sassi, personally. I think you're going to see a Silva in the Sassi back, too. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think that if... Yeah, I think he probably would pick him. We also mentioned that there is a potential to go with a back three in this game. Mm. Um, soak up pressure for, you know, the first first uh, first few minutes of the game and whatnot. Possibly for the first, yeah. especially if Enzo isn't fit. Especially, you if guys Enzo think that's fit. wise though. Well, what are you going to do in the midfield if Enzo isn't fit? I personally think he like if Enzo's fit, he's going to go with that same pivot, which I don't have a problem with. I just think when we play, when we randomly play the back three, we should, we just struggle like positionally playing out. It, nah, it'll I be think, it'll be like, I think it's counterintuitive because it's like you kind of don't want to start the game like that. I, I disagree. I mean, I I, I, I I disagree just for the fact that like if you set up right in the back three, it can work great. Like, listen, if you set up a bad back three and but that's it becomes the back it five and it's, just, and, it, and it's awful. But like, I, I, again, for me, I look at our... But the thing is, for me, like I look at our outlets, right? And, like one of our best attacking players is Gaston. If you free him up on the, on to be a right wing back, and he has, and he has a bit more freedom to join the attack and get forward, like that's a really good outlet for us on that right wing. And then that's also frees up Cole problem, Palmer though, to play like a like a right ten, which again you free him up in a, a bit of a half where it's difficult for him to be picked up. Where if he plays right mid or or as like just like a, a proper number ten, it's a bit easier to mark Palmer. But he's in that hey, half space constantly, sorry, then it's sorry, harder for him bro. to be to be um to be trapped. What are you saying, bro? Like, sorry. Like what you're saying is true. I think my thing about it is we haven't drill, we haven't played it enough or drilled it enough. What we just do think like we tried it at Brentford for me and it didn't work. I, I can see if we consistently played that throughout the season. But when we just want to do this against City, I think it's not a great idea to just try it against City. You know what I mean? Just to do I, it. I hear you on that, and I wouldn't do it but, if Enzo like, stayed. But if Enzo isn't if, fit, like what's the alternative? What what would your alternative be if Enzo isn't for me, fit? Me, like I would just I'll play. Um, Caicedo and Gallagher in the midfield. <laughs> we'll yeah, but but I'm, I'm to know, are, we, are we playing the sassy here so that I can just put this in quickly? So is it just the sassy? Yeah, I would or, put Chalaba, okay. but I think the going with the sassy is fine though, and I think that's what Poch will end up doing to be honest. That's what I think he'll do. So then we say there is the free and Enzo is forced back in. Is it just the usual midfield free? Yeah, yeah, although obviously we know how we've been setting up in the big games a lot, it's kind of like that 4 4 2 off the ball, but obviously, I guess you can just go for 4 2 3 1, which will be Caicedo and Enzo sitting and then. Like Gallagher in that ten, yeah, four two, four two three one, basically, yeah. But then I hate these four two three ones. They're so cool. No, man. is it that? It's like maybe go with like the four two three one, which has like the wide, yeah, like the, um, that, the left mid and right mid. That's it, I think. Yeah, that's oh. yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, mm. like that. And then okay, that makes sense. That speaks for itself, I think. In 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 the three. But then who's your friend? Obviously, Palmer's on the right. That's not even a discussion. Jackson's up front. That's not even a discussion. But who occupies the left for you guys? Because there could be Mr. Raheem back again, <laughs> who scored against City last time. Um, and he's he did, probably uh, good on the... He's, see, Sterling, I think... He, <laughs> Sterling is one of them guys, I think, that in the way that we're going to try and play against Man City, he's probably better equipped in running in behind and then putting it in the back of the net. I don't know if Mudrick I don't know if Mudrick can do that yet in terms of how Sterling does it. Mm. It might I don't know if you understand that in any way. Yeah, no, I hear you. Listen, like for me, this is such a tactical like conundrum for me because um our best front four right now on form for me would be obviously starting Gallagher just because he, we know we can do a good job against Rodri and he we need his legs in, in these big games, right? But for me, yeah. our best other three attacking players right now is Palmer, Jackson and Madueke, but You've just not really seen Madiweke play off the left. Now, I know he did that in his time in, in the Netherlands. So I know he's capable of doing it, but I just don't know if he's going to do that in this game. Um, Gallagher on the left, like, Imagine again, there's managers, who can get, there's like managers who can get midfield players to do a job on the left. I've just not seen it with Poch and Gallagher. And, and when we saw it against um, Sheffield United, <laughs> again, the worst team in the league, it looked horrible. So I don't think that's going to happen. And um, I feel like you can technically, if you want to start Madueke, start him on the right and then play Palmer false nine, which has had some joy this season. But I don't think this is the game to do it because we want Palmer to be involved. And I remember yeah. the Anfield game where Palmer was false nine. And oh. obviously that's, that was another game where we were just penned in. He got no joy, like no service, no joy. He was not in the game and it just stank. It, it just stank. So um, 
to be on the left, the only thing with Modric, like, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but to start Modric in this kind of game, yes, there'll be space in behind, so he can use his pace, cool. But we're going to need somebody who can, like, retain the ball well when he gets it, not lose it sloppily in areas. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if I can trust him in a game of this magnitude to start. Maybe to come off the bench and be an impact player, but to start on the left against Walker, like, I don't know, man. Because we saw what Walker did to Vinny in the week, like, and that was Walker off of a, of a bit of a layoff and injury. He came back and he, and he pocketed Vinny whenever they had 1v1s. It was crazy. So I don't know what you guys are saying for Everyone the left. seems to get the best change out of Walker. I don't know why, bro. Yeah, he, he, he has maybe this season. Because but, they played, yeah. yeah, this season. Like, maybe because they played together and training so much. He knows Walker's tendency. But the thing about Sterling right now, he's coming off of the flu. Hasn't played. Is he going to, you know what I mean? Or are you just going to chuck him back what in there? What would you do? Madrid. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, we have to go with one of Madrid's oh, matter with their Sterling. I mean, so. Madrid versus Carl Walker on the right. Hmm. I mean, Sterling, he, to be fair to him, at the bridge and away has been effective against Man City. At the bridge, Sterling absolutely cooked Yeah, he cooked Walker. I haven't seen Walker cook like that in a minute. He cooked him. And then at, at away, he, he cooked him again, cut inside and banged one in bottom corner. And like, he you seems know, to be that, motivated uh, against his it's just, Yeah, team. like, I, I would say Sterling. If he's fit, I would play Sterling. I know people don't like him, but I think for this game, I would, I, I'm looking at, up against the opponent. The fact that he plays well against Walker, the fact that in, when we do get them opportunities to break and get in behind and arriving at the back post, I have a bit more confidence in him putting it in the back of the air, even that sounds crazy, than sometimes I do Midrick. When I watch him, and I think Mudrick's a good finisher. I just, it's just the way that I think we're going to play, and I don't think Mudrick's, even though I think Mudrick's very quick and he can outspeed everyone on the pitch and whatever. I don't know if he's his mindset. He's he's un, like how we're going to play this game is the right. What's it like the the right in, in terms of here, if that makes sense, in terms of how he's got his game plan, how it's got to be portrayed in the game. I just think with Sterling, he will know what we need to do against Man City or how we're going to play against Man City because he's been playing against them more frequently and I think he knows how to be effective in these type mm. of games. It's just my I'll opinion. Be, yeah, no, yeah. I'll be interested to hear what Couch is obviously thinking on this. So maybe he's, he's just away with the, with the child at the moment. But it's like, it's a really interesting tactical thing because we play a lot down the right-hand side and I feel like Nani's been good on the right, but those were against teams that weren't pressing as high and would have us as pending as City will do. And I feel like having Palmer on the right, where we know him and Gusto have a great link up, like that's going to be big, especially with Enzo on that side as well, if he is fit, of course. But um, on the left, it's just uh, it's an interesting one. Honestly, I would probably start Madigweke. I would trust him given the form he's in. I feel like he can do a job there because I've seen him, I've literally seen him do a job there. I know people haven't seen him yeah. do a job here, there because he's not played there for us, but. He has it's played that on the left better. for 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 the Netherlands. No, that, that's not. Do you ask me what? On the but see, you're asking that's me what Poch will do. Honestly, I reckon Poch will start if Enzo's fit. He will start this lineup, but Chilwell left wing. Okay. Uh, what you say? And again, I, you guys know I, my I, thoughts I on that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think you that you're wrong there. Like that, that's a possibility as yeah, well. That's, that's, a, that's a great team. Team. That's a that's a possibility as well. I don't know if I want to try Matawiki on the left because again, even in this game, again. The strength in his game is, you know, his dribbling and whatnot and the, switching the sides and whatnot and where his, his comfort zones are and then putting him on the left. I don't know. I, I, I'd have to so see. Who would you play then? Uh, it's a tough one, man. It really is a tough one. I would I would personally just go with with Mudrick uh, just because he's been playing a little bit more the last little while and I want to see a little yeah. bit more partnerships on the pitch more so than just like, oh, just throw another guy in there. Just throw another guy in there, right? I know he hasn't been great. There hasn't been a lot of, you know, moments in the game where you're like, wow, this guy's really on top of things right now. But just for the sake of keeping things, you know, ticking over the same yeah. sort of lineups, the same sort of familiarity, I'd go with Mudrick. Okay. Well, we can switch it to Mudrick. I, like I said, I, I wouldn't be annoyed with Mudrick playing. I just think that in, in how we're going to approach the game and how we're going to want to play it, I think having Sterling arriving at the... I mean, Mitchell could do the same, but I mean, Sterling arriving in them familiar positions, which is his, his strength to me. I keep saying about the strength of Sterling is kind of this whole getting in behind and arriving in the box and just being there, if that makes sense, and scoring, you know what I mean? And, and he's done it. He's done it against Man City already. Um, but Mudrick, yeah, you know, if Mudrick plays, I want him to be involved. I just... I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if sometimes mm. Midrick, the, sometimes I feel like Midrick, he just switches off. <laughs> like he just seems to just 
Cruz in the game when I know there's so much talent and we need to get him on the ball and we know he can be so effective running in behind. And I'd actually like to see him against Walker on the run, pace-wise. I think that would be quite interesting to watch. But um, I don't know. But if we were to go to a 4 2 3 1, which is more like. No. Yeah, that no. was a four two three one. Right, sorry, four two. What was we going to do next? Not a four three. Well, we were three, looking at. Well, we were just really looking at a lineup without Enzo. Yeah, so a lineup without Enzo. Let's say Enzo's not in the team, and, let's mm. say, and again, this is based on fitness, not on form. Because I know there's some hipsters based- out there saying that oh, Enzo shouldn't start because he won six 0 without him. Uh, For me, that's just uh, that's 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 lunacy to be honest. Um, say the sassy's not available because he's still not hundred percent, even though he's back in the team. So. Badia Shield's available, but there's also Chalabar. Now, we've all, are we all agreeing that Chalabar plays and not Badia Shield? I don't think Badia Shield could play this game, could he? Surely not. No, not it has to be Chalabar. Game. If you're going to start somebody, that's not the source. Thing. Okay. And then you've got Kat Gallagher and Caicedo in this pivot we've seen already. Does Palmer go like that and have the job of dealing with Rodri and then Madwaki? Is that what we're saying in here? Yeah. So basically the same team. That would be very attacking. And there's a lot yeah. of defensive responsibility exactly. for both Modric and Noni against C, you know. And I feel like well, with how this game plays out, is... like I would want one of them off the bench as an option. Because let's say Madueke doesn't start on the right, like I feel him coming on on the right, maybe then we've Palmer inside in a second off if we need a goal. Like that's a great outlet for us to have. But starting both our outlets against C when we're gonna be penned in to start the game, it's uh it's a tricky one. How much it's of the not ball even so much the have... we're not gonna have like say about forty percent. Yeah. But um, it's not even going to be about having too much pressure on Madweki on Mudrick. It's going to be pressure on Gusto and Cucurella because you're not going to get a lot from the wide areas from Mudrick and, and Madweki. And just in terms of being switched on in the game, I'm not talking about like just tracking back and holding shape and whatnot. I'm talking about being switched on mm. in those positions. It's going to be difficult for, for Cucurella and Gusto if you play with an attacking lineup like that. This guy's an I've seen both of them turn the ball over a lot in, in dangerous areas. Again, again um, Modric, yeah, like not Modric especially is criminal of this, but I've seen Madawek do it against Palace. And I remember he was in good form. In the Palace game, he, he gave a horrible ball to Caicedo and then the guy packed out Petrovic from like 30 yards. Um, yeah. And like that came yeah. from, from Madawek. And it's like those little moments, you cannot afford that against Man City because a KDB, a Foden, like these guys will, will punish you more than like your Rodri, like, they will punish us if we make mistakes. Yeah, turn it over. And it's like, even though Mudrick, to me, has improved slightly, ta- you could still tell he's learning. Like, he's learning how to do the tactical defensive side of the game. And this is not the game where you want to be learning on the job. Because mm. these guys will destroy you. Like, you know what I mean? So, Well, how yeah, were we they- successful the last time? How were we successful against the City last time? And what do we do well in those yeah. games? Uh, to me, my my the the four four one. I don't think we... We're, we were just good with scoring in our attacking phase, but transitionally, they could have still scored seven. But um, to me, at the Etihad, though, what we did well last game is that we marked Roger at the game. And the moments that we did win the ball, we were actually dangerous. Like, yeah. we actually made use of the ball. We didn't we, we didn't give yeah, two giveaways. Cool. Like, of course, City, at times, their press is going to force you to give it away. But like a lot of times, we did have good chances and good opportunities at goal where we were care- where we were decisive with the ball and we were threatening. I do think though that we'd be a lot more effective. It, uh, this system works for me, but I think if we can I mean, listen to play this system against Man City, the back four are going to have to have one hell of a game. Let's just say that first, because there's going to be a lot of there going to be a lot of attacking patterns, and Gallagher and Caicedo are really going to have to make sure that they do the de- defensives correctly in front of them and, and clean up and stop the Bruyne and say Bernardo Silva sitting in them pocket holes and that's that's the one thing I noticed in the Etihad that we've done very well we narrowed we stopped them from playing through the middle which eliminated Alvarez and was it Foden at the time and the Bruyne the Bruyne the Bruyne playing in them pockets and so what then City had to do was do that and once they then done that we had the confidence in Doku up against Gusto but Palmer was if you remember Palmer was doing a good job of doubling up as well. So we ended up winning the balls back quicker because we forced them into the wide positions. And once we we then won, we had the the outlay of Jackson being able to spin in behind and hold the ball and, you know, carry the ball up well. And then Sterling arriving from the left and just trying to make sure he he basically out sprints Walker into the box. And that's what we were doing. It was just very effective. We just stopped them from playing 
through the middle. When you start letting them play through the middle and their little playmakers start getting the ball and turning, and you're in trouble because they're just going to ping balls into Harlem. And they're going to find space and then you're going to be in trouble. It's about forcing them out wide. I think the more we force them out wide and stop them from playing them little intricate passes in the middle and then, and then cutting through our defence, the better a chance we've got of actually hurting this man season. And, and that's why I don't want to play that. Yeah. I mean, normally, if you watch our games, we do kind of defend in like a 3-5-2 shape sometimes, sometimes 4 4 I don't want to go at five at the back first. I don't want to. The reason why I don't want to show too much respect to City at first and have them, I don't want them to get in the rhythm. Because once City start getting right. in the rhythm, then right. we become difficult to play our game, and then we sit back, and then us getting going is hard. You know what I mean? Yes, you're not wrong. I just think that what we're thinking about here is that we're not going to be able to play the the style of football that you want to play in the four three three or the four two three one anyways without Enzo. This is all mitigated. If Enzo plays, then oh, obviously see, yeah, you want to take away the middle. But like, if you have yeah, to true. play Gallagher as a six, and then you have to play Cole Palmer, who's kind of like trying to sit on Rodri, it's. I don't think that that's as effective as just playing with a a dedicated mm -hmm. defender in a libero role, like free to just kind of like roam and destroy and whatnot. Like, I would much more? rather that in, in that in the, in this particular in this particular setup, right? So. so if if Enzo ain't fit, Couch, what about Carney playing in the 10 and Palmer on the right and then playing that? Um, be he just hasn't been used bad? that way, right? Like, again, like we haven't seen him from the start for so long. I, I would have liked to have seen him play um, and have some sort of like connection and cohesion with the squad before you throw him in, yep. you know, semi final FA Cup. You know, here's your start. Yeah. You know, like it yeah. just doesn't make any sense yeah. to me to do that. Coach right? hasn't trusted him at all. Yo, that's crazy, well, though. Like, I'm thinking, I hear you guys talk. I'm like, we really struggle for midfield options. Like Enzo yeah. is down and this is what I'm saying, yeah. man. There's no Leslie, there's no Lavia. connie has been back for a little while, but we've not really seen him start. He's only been getting five minutes here, twenty, maybe fifteen minutes there. Like, but that's it. So we're really stuck for options, which is why I look at the back five because again, not that I want to just defend the whole game, but we've seen how Arsenal were effective going to City and basically playing with a back six because Jesus and Saka who were on the wings were literally for most of the game playing as like a back six. They were so um, connected to the back four. And that back four was just literally four centre-backs. Real Madrid yeah. again or, or in the midweek. First 20, 30 minutes, they were having a bit of a goal, trying to play out a bit more, in a bit more expansive. But then after that, they, again, didn't have a shot on target because they spent most of it just defending. And to be fair, they did nullify City pretty well. It worked. It worked. Because their only yeah. big chance, which they created, was the KDB one, which he missed and he put over the bar. But other than what that, the goal comes what from a mistake and a lot of it was just long shots. What did they do so well in the second half, though, if you notice, in terms of defence? It wasn't just put everyone back and whatever. It's tactically how they defended. If you watch what they did, they just packed the midfield up. Again, they couldn't play mm. through the middle. Every time Foden tried to drop in or De Bruyne, it ended up forcing them to go out wider because they just wasn't getting any joy. And like I said, I don't think City are as effective when you force them out wide. And I know Doku's got the, the sometimes the beating of players and he can be a problem or whatever, but I'd rather see De Bruyne pulled out wide them being in the middle of, of the defence and midfield receiving balls and then turning around either hitting one or, you know, playing the ball over the top to Haaland who's pulling away from whoever's playing off the back of, you know, the, whatever. But these are the things I think, it's, it's all these intricate things that you really have to get right when you play City, for me, because otherwise they'll just play you off the park. You know, you need to be very, like, drilled and understand what you're doing and it needs the right personnel. And you're right, if we don't have Enzo, that shape is going to be a lot harder in midfield to carry in how we want to play. However, if we still don't have him, I still expect Gallagher and Caicedo to make sure, and the defence, Silva, talking a lot with Chalaba, make sure the gap between them from where they are to the defence is not big. Like when we haven't mm. got the ball, make sure you still have your two pivots sitting in that back pocket where it's very narrow. They can't, they can't feel, you know, they can't get the ball. You're always looking behind you and they're sort of trying to have to go like that rather than sitting behind you here. Do you know what I mean? Like make it hard for him. Like, and that, Palmer, uh, yeah. Palmer's going to have to drop in. He's going to have to drop in, Palmer. He's not going to be able to just hold up there if he's playing in the um, 10. He's going to have to occupy Rodri. He's going to have to. Um, That's his job. No, I, don't, I don't think that he will. I don't think that he will. I still yeah. think, and this is the problem that I have with this shape right now. I don't think that you're going to put Palmer to sit on Rodri. I think it's still going to be Gallagher's responsibility. It's just now how do you, how do you, how do you compensate for the space? That's going to be left yep. with him going there, right? And then, you know, I guess you're going to drop Caicedo in the middle as the deepest between the two of them, between Gallagher and, and Palmer, and then hope that, um, you know, he's having a great game. Because I don't see any, without Enzo, I don't see any way else to play this game. 
Like I would rather have like the two, the, the, the actual pivot, the double pivot, and then have Gallagher just sit on end yeah. on, uh, on, um, on Rodri, but we're not going to, we're not going to have that. That's what I'm saying. We don't have that. Right. Yeah, so I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like an, uh, the, the inverted triangle with Caicedo sitting the deepest in between, um, you know, Palmer and, uh, and Gallagher with each of them having the license to get forward. Right. Well, you think he's gonna be more like that with them on the yeah. sides? Yeah, yeah. So you're going more four three three now, basically. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're going more like that. That's I mean, crazy, it be, man. It, it, well, what else is what's, what's no? I'm not. Thing? I'm I'm saying crazy in my head of like this is where like we're thinking about these solutions, and I think this is where I've like my sticking point on Potch. Like this is where you get paid to find solutions. You know, when you don't. You don't have Enzo, like the manager has to find solutions in these type of situations. Cause right now I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah, three at the back. Like it's I'm like, we may have to Yeah, I made a point. I personally don't want to do it, but yeah, make a good point as to where like we don't if we don't have Enzo, like who really is the best option to play that well, Gallagher role on Roger? You know what I mean? The one thing I would say that we do have a lot in the midfield is legs. That both of them are gonna run, you know, they're gonna exactly. run class A though. Exactly. So utilize, utilize to their strengths is what I'm saying. Try and work a way where Caicedo and Gallagher's very effective as just the pivot without Enzo. Make it work. Like use their energy. I mean, Make sure they shut it's, down in the space. For, like, for me, it's not even about it's not even about the actual shape four three three four two three one. You know, it's not about that. It's the assignment that you give the players. And then oh, if sure. Gallagher is if Gallagher is still sitting on Rodri. How do you manipulate the other two so you're not like you lose balance and you're not like exposed yeah. in the middle, right? And that's what I'm not the about, only right? one. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, obviously you don't want Palmer dropping too deep, right? You, yeah. you don't want to see that. So how do you how do you manipulate the space so that you have, you know, I, I, honestly, there's no real way to do it. I just think that Kaiseido is going to have to have a blinder. You really yeah. will have to have a blinder yeah. in this one. Yeah, I think they're both going to have to have a blind eye between them. I think they're going to have to work their socks off in midfield, really and not. Like, really, mm -hmm. truly. And we're just going to have to be very effective on the attack. So whoever it is, is the three or the four that are playing up front. If the, if Caicedo and Gallagher and defence manage to contain what's coming at them, they've got to be as, as equally as effective. Everything has to work. You know, it all has to work for us to, to like, you know, to, to win this game. And we could hurt them because it's not like they can't. They're not good defensively. They're just not. They play very high. They're confident in playing the high block. You know, they, they did it against us a number of times. And Jackson spun them, got in behind. We saw Sterling's goal at the eight he had. We, we were sharp and got behind. We played the ball across. Sterling was free, cuts to the side, bang. Like, we're going to get chances. One thing for sure that I know we will have is chances in these games. It's just how effective can our attackers be in taking them, you know? So, defend properly. And attack properly is probably is 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 probably the, the key here. And each player is going to have to play to their strengths, like literally to mm. their strengths. To be yeah, just a to... big thing on that. Maybe before we get into like actual like um predictions, yeah. like just looking at it from a Man City point of view, like you're right, like there will be space in transition. I cannot say that they're bad defenders, but they just leave a lot of space in behind because of how much they like to overload the midfield and then also the attack. Because again, I don't know of another team in world football that has their centre back starts a centre back, but then he will end up. In a number ten position, a lot in the Kanji. Has he been doing that John Stones role a lot this season? I don't think he was great at it at the start or middle of the season. And I think he even played against us at the Bridge. And I don't think he had the greatest game. I know we scored from a, like a set piece, but um, I don't think he had the greatest game. But of recent, though, like of recent, Akanji has been one of their best players, and not just defensively, but in that role, like he was amazing against Madrid. He might have been their best player actually. Now I think thinking about it, because he was the one creating a lot of big chances, but. The way that he was able to try and get through the midfield and picking the right moments to then like make the underlaps. And then he was the one receiving the balls from the likes of Doku or Bernardo Silva in behind to then cut it back. Like he was having a great game and we're going to need our players on point to track his runs. But um, nice. of course, if they make mistakes, then we can obviously um, get them in behind, we get get them in the back line because they're only going to have Diaz there, maybe Walker and um, potentially their left back, whether it's Ake or Gavardia. So we're going to have to try and pounce on those moments. And I agree. And I think we, what, the one thing we need to forget about at the moment is Christopher and Kunku this season, guys. I know it's a bit exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would just but... shut him down for the season, yeah. honestly. 
like we shouldn't really be is this is on Chelsea FC so I need to have a look at this Let's have a quick look. yeah no it's the latest injury update news we've got an injury update here for Enzo Enzo has returned um, to, to full, full training, training. Man, look, his, his <laughs> oh he's playing there you go he's back that's good he's yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah, think he does but... lost... wait I don't know. I mean, listen, even if he's like only 70, 80 percent, he's gonna probably start because this is the kind of game where you just start a guy like like Enzo, he's important to the team and how we play. Um yeah, like just you're, just, you're gonna have to right? bring it back in and just hope he can see out the 90 minutes or how long we need him for. Nah, Josh, the reason why I said I, I like yeah, I would love to see Nkungu play, but I think it maybe with the games we have left, by the time he comes back, we're already in our second well, to last game, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I just think that he has for his confidence and like the work that he's been putting in off the pitch. You have to want to see him back. Like again, yeah, like, it's, I, like it's, it's, I'm it's, not it's saying completely shut him out, but like I don't think the level of impact you're looking for in Cuckoo is going to be here this season. Like you know what I mean? No, yeah, of course I not. Agree. In terms of like return, but like in terms of you got to play him if he if he comes back because you know he's been Kuku. working for these moments. Of course, he's been working for five those moments, right? Five yeah, minutes ago, yeah, we've had an injury. Yeah, shut him down. Five minutes ago, we've had an injury update just um, put on the on the Chelsea website. Chelsea's injury update ahead of Man City. Enzo Fernandez is not on there. That list is getting shorter. He is available and it is getting shorter. So Nkunku is now in partial team training along with Sanchez. Carl Will was still undergoing his rehabilitation along with Wesley Fofana, Reese James, Lavia and Leslie. And it is getting smaller. But for Enzo Fernandez is not on that list, guys. So for him to not be on that, on that list means he is available tomorrow. Wait, so, what does it say on Sterling? Sterling? He's available. Sterling's available as well. well sorry, can you yeah. put up, uh, if you can, can you pull up the list again? Did he say anything right. about Sterling? Yeah. He's available, man. People are saying he's in full training. Nah, but I mean, not, when was he Sterling. Injured, I want to see like, other people as well. I mean, I'll just look at it myself. No, there's nothing, mm. there's no nothing about Sterling. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying people were saying in the chat that Sterling's in full training, but it's like, wasn't he always available though? He wasn't like out for like any injury or anything. Oh, I've, so. got some in I've got some interesting news for you about Man City. Erling Haaland has a muscular issue. So it's a doubt. That's why that he, he came out. That yeah, last he, so he, he might not be playing tomorrow, but the Bruin is fine. Is what That's good news for them, to be honest. Like Haaland, recently, they haven't been playing to his strengths much. He hasn't been doing that great anyways himself in his game. So like, Alvarez started well, I, I, as a striker rather than a midfielder. Like, like I that's to not going to be there, like a massive I, downgrade, to be honest. Uh, I beg um, to differ. Like even that last game at Etihad, like I thought that Holland had a couple guilt edge opportunities where he should have buried. Like I'm talking like open headers. Yeah, like, he should normally take yeah, those. Like that's there. But that's my yeah, point. That like, he, he missed big chances. Oh, yeah. But he yeah. might make one against us, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think I there's also a good chance that Alvarez might take one if he gets a chance. Well, not headers, Alvarez. maybe, yeah, but like I different mean, kind I of mean, chances Alvarez can yeah, take. And also, he, he impacts the game in a different way that Harlan doesn't do in terms of like maybe linking up or in and around the box, a bit of sharper movement as well in and around the box. No, so, like, not, all I'm saying is that obviously Harlan's a great striker. He's a great goal. He's a great goal scorer. He's a pretty good finisher, not the most elite finisher you've ever seen in terms of like clinical, like in clinical oh, efficiency. Oh. But Alvarez isn't like an all slouch either. He's not a massive downgrade in many aspects. And I think in some aspects he's better than Holland. Yeah, I think I would I say that I would rather him. I would rather face Alvarez than I would rather face Holland. That's just me. I would rather face yeah, Alvarez. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. You I'm not going to say you should say otherwise, but I'm just saying that Alvarez in many aspects is, is actually better than Holland in my opinion. But that's a different agenda saying, that isn't our like, problem to better team themselves. player. Like, but to me, with Holland is like they could be dead in the game. And De Bruyne could just get the ball and just hit across the Holland and he just score. You know what I mean? But I think I mean, Alvarez, mm. they actually have to break us down with a team goal. You know what, you know what I'm saying? I actually think that we can defend I hear you, but I'll be honest. Like, in the games that we've played against Haaland and Man City, like, he's missed a lot of big chances against us. Again, he scored a penalty at the bridge. He scored a tap in, in the second half as well. Cool. But like, even in that game, the one v one he had against Sanchez, which Sanchez made a very good save, that didn't hit the side in that side netting in a way that you would expect from the best striker in the world. It didn't. And then again, and at the, and at the Etihad, he, his movement caused Cole a lot of problems and he had like a two or three free headers, which on another day should have gone in, but they didn't go in. I mean, seen a lot with Haaland. So that's just my yeah, point that he's a handful, I, but he also misses a lot of chances. And then obviously yeah. in link up play, hold up play, he's not, he's not elite. He's not. I mean, the guy's, yeah, at, yeah. the guy's at Man City. Let's not forget that. Like, I, we understand what Alvarez's danger is. The, the question you have to ask, because like, are they more dangerous with Alvarez or are they more dangerous with Haaland? 
I think they're more dangerous with Holland because that guy is the focal point of the team and he scores a lot of goals. Of course, when you have Alvarez, they have they, 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 they he makes everyone else dangerous. So it's not just that you're looking, you're focusing on on Holland. You're looking at you know him bringing other people into the game. It's not as predictable, you know. So there is that that side of it. But to be honest, there's no there's no replacing a, a clinical goal scorer for me. Somebody that can just score. Yeah, goals. I just think when I look at Silver and Chalobah, for example, playing in a defence tomorrow, I think they would rather deal with Alvarez than they would Haaland, just purely because of his physicality, his, his, how he moves in the box. I think Alvarez is a very good player. I think he, I think he will, you know, he does score goals for him. I don't think he's as clinical as Haaland is, but what I think is better for us is managing and marking a player. I think that's kind of just scattering around the pitch rather than having someone that you know is going to just power through behind you and be a problem to deal with physically. You might actually that. look online to see like their numbers in terms of like who's got the better shot accuracy this season because I've seen Harlem miss a lot of chances. He does generate a lot of chances for his movement for sure. But like when people say, oh, who's the better finisher? Harlem's a better finisher. I think he's a better goal scorer based on, on volume of numbers. Yeah, but he's, he's that doesn't also mean I feel like Harlem creates a lot of those chances for himself yeah. as well. well. Yeah, no, and I mentioned that, of course. He, he's, a, he's, yeah. a, he's a handful. Like, and especially against Thiago Silva and Chalabot, which would be my back to like physicality where there, there could be a situation where they're just ISO and Haaland wins through being 6'5 and much faster than both of them. So, like, that could happen, for sure. And it would have happened right. the same way with Alvarez. So, again, we'll see. All, all I'm saying is that Haaland to Alvarez is not as big a downgrade as some people think out there. No, it's not a downgrade. What but what I'm saying is, when you look at how we how we were going to play tomorrow and, and, and the preference, I would think, would be for Silva and, and Chalaba would be to deal with Alvarez rather than having to deal mm. with Haaland. Having that, 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 you know, that big physicality speed you know monster in the box sort of like presence all the time I'm having to deal with that's not easy you know so like wander around a bit more and he would like you said he'll link play he'll come out left he'll do right he can be effective in the box but i just think we can mark that a bit better yeah jam let me let me phrase it in a way especially yeah. for some people in the chat so if i'm a defender i feel like if i have a good game i could shut out alvarez more efficiently because if we're playing well and we're i defend and I mark Alvarez and I'm doing yeah. my due diligence, I can more contain him easily than Holland, which at any moment can have that burst and could overpower me at any moment in the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Even if he's yeah. having a bad game, I feel like players like Alvarez, he kind of has to get, he's a good finisher. Like I, I think he's a top striker, but at any moment, Holland could be down and then he could just boom. But I think I think Josh, the instruction tomorrow for Alvarez, if he's playing the striker, won't be the one that that's always moving around. Yeah. I think he will do that in moment patches with De Bruyne and drop in, and like De Bruyne will try and run in behind. They'll try and do that with him. But I think his job tomorrow will be more of trying to hold his position. And I think if you're Thiago Silva and Chalaba dealing with him and his physicality, balls coming in and stuff, they're going to be able to contain or deal with that a lot better than someone that's just a blimmin' unit. And then what they have to do is put a good ball in. <laughs> and he just gets his head on it or saying, do you know what I mean? And then you're like, oh, goodness sake. Like, it's more about how we we can defend better, I think. But listen, they're both good players, top quality players. I just I just think I'd prefer Alvarez than up against Harlem. But like, score, score predictions, guys. Let us know. I mean, ads. What we're saying. Score predictions. That means we need to tie it up. Listen, bro, it's 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 not easy. Like, okay, let me put it like this, right? If it was before the Man United game, I would have given us like a two percent chance of winning because we just hadn't beat any team, any big team in a big game that had more than nine players on the pitch. Like we just hadn't done it. And even though for as bad as United were, at least we got over the line against them. Even though it was their mistake giving away the penalty and we needed some Cole Palmer magic from obviously them also sleeping at the corner, like, but we got it done. And that's what big games are all about. It's just about getting over the line. But we haven't done it enough for me to go into this game and be confident and, and say that, oh, because we're Chelsea, we can make a moment happen like we did in the Champions League final against City, where we were also massive underdogs. It's just difficult for me to pick us to beat them, knowing that it's Pep Guardiola, it's at Wembley. I forget it's even Pochettino. our record. I just look at it as Pochettino versus Pep Guardiola. It's Pochettino. If I, am I going to be saying on Sunday morning that, wow, Poch got one over Pep Guardiola at Wembley? Am I gonna be saying be, that I just don't feel like I will be, to be honest? It wouldn't be the first time he got one over on him, just just to put it out there. <laughs> but which big games has he done? And obviously, don't get me wrong, like Tottenham versus City in the league, it's still a, technically a big game, of course. But like, Champions he League. hasn't. 
But like, so oh, you know what he did in the two legs he did. Although again, the VAR madness of that game, Sterling's hat trick and whatnot, hey, it was crazy. Hey, but you know hey, what? To now, be fair, he did. No, no, no. I'm exactly. no, I'm saying it. Okay. I mean, it was a mad, okay. it was a mad game. <laughs> it was Come a crazy game, but now. he did Come it. He did it. So that that boosts it a little bit. So I will say, you know what? That's good to hear. That is good to hear. Oh. But like. <laughs> He should have actually had an, a W at the Etihad if he didn't make as many substitutions as he did, which made us so defensive. And but again, this is my thing, game. though. Like it's, that's it's, that's it's mm. another thing that I don't like. About yeah, hundred percent, and that's the nail on the head because it's not just against Pep Guardiola. We've seen it constantly throughout the season where Poch, when we need him to make a change, or we see that the game's getting away from us, he's late to either change things tactically or he just gets it wrong. And we've seen it a lot. And it's like in games like this, you need a manager who's going to get more decisions right oh. than wrong. And you also need your players to turn up in big games. So this isn't just about pot. This is about the players turning up and showing that individual quality to go and win you a game, whether that's going to be Cole Palmer or somebody else. We need that. And then we also need the lack of mistakes at the back because we're going to be pressured. We're going to need a lot of good concentration and also good defensive actions to see us through. So it's um it's a tough one, man. I mean, if I'm honest, I'm going to predict us to lose 2-1. I expect okay. it to be a tight game. I said to be competitive, but I'm going to predict that. And I'm going to hope, like I always do, that the boys pre be wrong. And listen, on the day, I'll be there waving my scarf. I'll be excited. I'll be probably feeling a bit different about the prediction, right? I'll probably predict 3 0 or something because I'll be in the moment. But for right now, I'm going to just hope that the boys prove me wrong. We'll see. Xavi. I'm going to be positive, man, for once. 2 1 to Chelsea. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's, let's see if we have a change of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Couch. Yeah, I don't do I predictions, know, but I, I I expect it to be a good game, and I expect it to not go as many people think it will. Um, I think ultimately the game is going to be, it's not going to be end-to-end. It's not going to be one of those games. It's going to be very tactical, slow, slow build-up, and, um, you know, hopefully we can nick it, but just got to take the few opportunities that you have. And we've been better have a politician, though. That's how I do it, man. You don't know. <laughs> can I just say though, like we can't, we have to start the game better than we did against Liverpool because at Wembley, like we were lucky to even still be level at halftime because we started so poorly, they looked so nervous, and again, that's a shoot of confidence for me because we can't start that badly again. Like these young players are going to learn from that and hopefully start with just a better intensity, a better attitude. And listen, there's an opportunity to do something against City again. We have the the extra two days recovery, uh, so they only have two days recovery from the um the mid the midweek game, which went 120 minutes. They went out. Mm-hmm. There's all of that going on. Harlan's now injured. Like these, these, there's these things going on which work in our favour, which give us a chance. So, again, I'm just hoping that the boys can do it. Because if we get to the final against United or Coventry, that's a really big chance to wow. save the season and make the season. Uh, yeah, let's something. not do this. Give but, yo, Poch literally did say a lot of players couldn't sleep that night before we went. It kind of makes sense why we started the game like that. Exactly. These, these guys are nervous. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with a positive result tomorrow. I, I yeah, free and all, yeah? I'm going to go with a 2-0 Chelsea. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to score semi-early, sit back and take a lot, and then in the second half we'll get another one. And it's oh, pause, game bro. 2-0. 2-0. And I'm going to go with a yeah, Jackson. No Diddy on that. That was crazy. Why? Jackson to score one of the goals. And I'm also going to go with a goal for... Can only be one name, man. Thiago Silva, corner. Well, not Cole Palmer, no? Not Duncan on his, uh, his former team. Palmer. Cole Palmer's going to assist Jackson. Cole Palmer's going to assist mm. Jackson on the break. Watch, watch. It's mm. coming Listen, all I'll say is if Cole Palmer dunks on City and outperforms Foden at Wembley, conversations will be had. Oh, yeah. I feel, I feel like a Thiago Silva banger is coming. I don't know why. Like one of the ones where mm. he just rides at the bird near post and... Yeah, you know, He I mean, did he score at the bridge against them like that. Yeah, that's it. the reason why, that's the main reason why I want to start him as well because he's a goal threat, man. He's the only goal for it. It is so crappy. I mean, the sassy a little bit, but like the rest of our the defenders are shocking in the box when I watch them. Mm-hmm. So bad. It's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, guys, I do need to dip. This has been a great first show back on both channels. Make sure you smash the likes. Yep. In, leave a comment below as well, guys. We want to know what your score predictions are for the game. And like I said, you're going to get a lot more consistent uh, shows on. We'll be doing a match reaction to this as well on Sunday at one o'clock. I've been told. Um, Well, Sunday lunchtime. Um, So you'll see us then. And then we've got the big match preview for the Arsenal game, which will probably be the day after. (laughs) So you're going to get two shows back to back at the same time. It's one o'clock in the afternoon, guys. So he's won it. We're giving it to you. We're back. 
we're back and we're in full steam ahead, man. So big up to everyone in the chat as always, guys. Lots of lots of football for Chelsea the next five days. Man City first, Arsenal away. We could beat Man City and then Arsenal's chance of winning a Premier League title. Can you imagine that? Um yeah. We possible. can't have nice things. Let's be silly. Don't be silly. We can't have oh, nice yeah, things. We can't have nice things. <laughs> We're probably going to lose both now, I'm joking. Anyway, let's see what happens. Guys. <laughs> big love. See you later. Take care. Enjoy your Friday, guys. Yeah. And uh, big up Peace. the panel as well. Ouch. Ads. Big up, my love. Big up, later. big up. Peace.